It's a dual boiler PID machine, but that's just the start. With an updated design and some very unique and useful features, this machine is set to become a standout at the high end of prosumer level home espresso. Hey, espresso lovers, Mark here from Whole Latte Love. Today, it's a top to bottom and inside out look at the Quick Mill Vetrano design. Now, design as part of the name is important. There are a few versions of the Vetrano and the Vetrano design model is a whole latte love exclusive. We work directly with Quick Mill on functional and aesthetic upgrades for the design version of the Vetrano. Those changes, well, functionally, the steam and hot water valves operate using joystick levers, which replace turning knobs on other Vetranos. Aesthetically, the design version of the Vetrano has a more elegant front face with fewer lights and switches, flush mounted PID controller, and no laser etched logos. The result is a cleaner look with improved lines. And the Vetrano design is available with the stock black accents, or you can upgrade and take the design a step further with beautiful walnut trim on the joystick levers for the steam and hot water, the E61 lever handle, and the dual spout portafilter handle. The custom walnut trim is gorgeous and adds a touch of class to the machine. Beyond aesthetics, the Vetrano has standout capabilities and truly useful features. So here's the short list on those. Line pressure pre-infusion, extra high steam pressure, externally adjustable brew pressure, joystick operated valves, accurate brew temps, boiler drains, stainless steel frame, shot timer, and more. Coming up, more details on those, including a tour of internal components and stace results for brew temps and a look at steaming power. But first, let's cover the basics. The Vetrano is a plumbable dual boiler rotary pump machine with PID temperature control of both boilers. Line pressure pre-infusion means you can partially lift the E61 lever and pressure from the plumbed connection is applied to the coffee without the pump coming on. This helps improve extractions. A common use of long, low flow and pressure pre-infusions is to tame the brightness of fresh from roast specialty coffees. To take full advantage of this capability, we recommend the use of a pressure regulator on the plumbed in connection to control input pressure. When the pump does come on, the Vetrano is really quiet. So I'll show you why when we go under the hood, but if you know anything about these machines, there's a clue in the location of the brew pressure adjustment located on the side of the machine. Bonus points if you can figure that one out before I show you why. Now, I've worked with a lot of machines and appreciate this accessibility. On most machines, you have to go underneath or take off some panels to get at that pressure adjustment. A real pain when you have to run the pump to make a change. At the service boiler's max setting of 272 Fahrenheit, you'll have about 2.1 bar of pressure available. Now, for most, more pressure is desirable. If it's too much, though, you can always set it lower. That's a nice feature with dual boiler machines. Adjusting steam temperature has no effect on brew temperature like it does in machines with heat exchange boilers. You'll have options using that steam power. The Vetrano design comes stock out of the box with both a two hole and four hole steam tip. That's rare and gives you options to fit your steaming style. Both the hot water and steam wands are no burn. On the steam side, keeping that heat in not only saves your fingers, but it's gonna reduce internal condensation and help prevent milk baking on the wand. The PID display is up high and functions as a shot timer during an extraction. Otherwise, it alternates between showing the current temperature in each boiler. It's gonna be the service boiler temp when the dot is after the second character and brew temp when after the third. To change temperatures, just press both buttons and T1 appears, which sets brew water temp. To change, press the up arrow button, then use the up and down buttons to set your desired temp. After a moment, the display reverts to T1. From there, press the down button to go to T2 and use the same method to set the service boiler temp. To exit, wait for T1 or 2 to display and press the down button until it returns to showing current boiler temperatures. Now, if you'll only be making espresso, you can turn off the steam boiler. To do that, press and hold both buttons. 
Then press the left button to cycle to STN. Then press the right button to toggle on and off. Once turned off, press the left button two times to exit the menu. Now, this setting is going to persist when the machine is turned off. In use, you'll know the steam boiler is off as the display cycles between showing the brew boiler temp and off. Dual boiler PID machines should provide accurate brew temps, so I always get out this case and run informal tests. The Vetrano design met my expectations, consistently averaging within about one degree Fahrenheit of the PID setting once up to temp midway through a simulated extraction. Access to the water reservoir is behind a hinged door. Capacity in that reservoir is three liters. I like the hinged door, which stays in place when opened, and the large uniform cup warming surface with details mirrored onto raised panel edges. Body panels feature thick angles on the edges, which flow down to and continue onto the base. Up front, those angles have LED backlights. Now, those can be turned off if desired. A dual gauge monitors brew and steam pressure. A small light above flashes briefly when the machine is turned on. Two times if not in eco mode, and three times if it is, which powers down the boilers after 20 minutes of no use. I really like the base, which carries one continuous seamless trim panel from front to back of the machine. While drip trays may not be the most exciting part of a machine, I like the large capacity of this one and how it incorporates into the frame. The drip tray has a removable plug should you run into a drain line from the collection cup underneath. That's always a good idea if plumbing the machine direct to water line. Now, before we go inside the machine, a look at what comes in the box. Things you usually do not get with machines, like a tamper that's actually usable. Two steam tips, a braided stainless line with a right angle fitting. Plus, we include the adapter to go from BSP to US standard plumbing. Single and double spout portafilter, back flush disc, drain line, and manuals on this neat little USB card. With that, let's go over to the whole Latte Love Lab and have a look inside the Vetrano design. All right, let's get under the hood of the Vetrano, one of my favorite things to do. Now, I've already got it opened up a little bit. I'm gonna show you, you know, this is a really easy machine to get into. It's just these connectors right here that I had to remove. Um, I left this on here. But so what you do is you take these two out um, that are gonna be back here. The back panel will come off. This guy right here will come right off. You can set that aside. Then it's three screws, one, two, and three. And then the carrier for the water reservoir comes off. We'll take a look again at this in a second. Set that aside. For the side panels, then uh, it is one, two, three, four. These two are up front in the drip tray. These two sit back here and loosen a couple underneath, and those come right off. So that's these guys right here. But let's start at the top, or the bottom here. We'll work our way up top. So first thing I really like what to see here, this is one solid piece of stainless steel front to back. Now, a lot of times, manufacturers will weld on the supports for a drip tray, and then the UPS man goes and drops the machine when he drops it at your house, and those can get bent or something. So I like this nice solid frame here, and that it's stainless. That's really nice, too. Uh, oh, also, we'll take a look at this pump. So I open this up, and you know, one thing you can do on this machine is adjust the brew pressure. Now, on most machines that have a rotary pump like this, you're gonna have to go underneath the machine to access this, because the pump will be in here in a horizontal fashion. Um, so it's really kind of hard. You'd have to hang it off an edge to adjust that. With this, what you have through the side panels, this access hole, this pops right up, and then you can adjust the brew pressure right there. That's really nice. Now, so what we have here then is a couple of stainless steel boilers. Both of them have insulation on them. We'll talk about what's going in and out of those in a second. All the brains for the PID, you loosen this screw up. And the brains are right under here, so I'm going to pull that out. So there's the brains of our PID. I like that there's a nice metal cover over that to protect it from moisture. But one of the nice things about this machine, no internal venting of moisture, as we'll see in a moment. All right, so pump here, water comes around up to here. Another nice thing on this machine is here's it's just one solenoid valve. Now, on a lot of dual boiler machines, and that's a solenoid valve right there, you might have two or three. On this machine, it's a mechanical switch to switch from plumb to 
uh, reservoir fed, so you don't need a solenoid there. And because that's open outside line pressure, you can always do that line pressure pre-infusion on this machine. So one solenoid valve here, so that is gonna control, you know, if you're gonna fill your uh, steam, steam or service boiler here, or if it's gonna run, your pump's gonna run to the brew boiler. Right here what we have is an expansion valve, so this is kinda like a safety for the brew boiler. If it gets far too hot, this will let pressure escape. So on the brew boiler, we'll start with a little guy here, it's a little harder to see. So right here, this black wire, this is temperature probe for PID. Um, over here, it's kinda hard to see, but down in here, is what we call a high limit switch. So if the boiler gets too hot, this will pop like a circuit breaker. So you just go in there and push that down. Um, we can see that the tube's running here. So here's the return from the E61 group. So this goes into the bottom of the boiler. So when, it, when this machine is just sitting stable like any E61, it's gonna thermo siphon. So over on the side here, and this one's really hard to see, but it's down just a little bit from the top of the boiler, this is where that hot water is constantly circulating out to the E61, and then it's gonna come back through this lower tube and down lower in the boiler. It's gonna have that constant circulation that heats up uh, the group head. All right, let's go over to the service boiler here. Something kind of neat here. Oh, and there's something really neat underneath this machine we'll take a look at in a minute. So another high limit reset right here. Boiler gets too hot, that'll pop. Um, if your boiler's not heating, go. that's the first thing you do is go try and push those down. Um, then we've got over here, this is the tap for our steam, so that comes off the top of the boiler. This is a tap for our hot water, goes out to here. Now there's got to be a tube that goes down deeper into the boiler where the water is. Right here, this is the fill level probe, so this senses the water level in the boiler here and lets the machine know when it needs to fill. Then we've got that temperature probe for the PID. Now over here, now in most boilers like this, you open up most machines, not all, but most, you're gonna have a vacuum relief valve up here. And that's when you, you know, sometimes if, you're, if you have had a machine like this, it heats up and you hear a little hiss at some point, that's that vacuum relief valve closing. Its purpose is just to let the machine open to outside air pressure. Um, now what we have on this machine is a combination vacuum relief valve and safety valve. So this allows up in here, I believe, allows the machine to open the outside, or the boiler to open the outside pressure uh, when the boiler cools down below boiling. Um, and then you can see over here, it says 2.5 bar on there. That's the safety valve. So if this boiler ever builds up too much pressure, it's gonna blow uh, or uh, release it here. So what's nice about all this is all these things that could vent any moisture in this machine are routed out front, and they're gonna end up through this little spigot right here into your drip tray, which is of course not in place here. Notice up front here, there's a cut here. The drip tray is pre-drilled so you can install a drain. It does come with a drain hose. All right, what else do we need to take a look at? Uh, we got, here's the back end of our PID control, or PID display right here. We've talked about that. Uh, I think that's pretty good. Oh, let's just take a look. Oh, a lot of machines are gonna use a pressure plate or conductivity of the water to let you know if there's water in the reservoir. Now I have this machine plumbed in, um, so I flip the switch, the water reservoir is kind of offline. In fact, I flip the switch that disables sensing of it. But this machine uses, I believe it's a capacitive sensor that's in here that senses when the machine runs out of water. So there's no pressure plate. Sometimes those pressure plates can be a little finicky, not the case with this machine. So let me take a second, I'm gonna turn the machine over, be right back. All right, got the machine flipped over. I wanna show you the LEDs, cause it's got those nice LED lights. So if you look here, here are those LEDs right here. And then, I, so on each side of the machine, you do disconnect one of these guys. You know, I suppose if you wanted to go in and change the color of these, you could just put in different colors if you want. It doesn't look like that would be too hard. Also like this uh, foam here, which is gonna be, uh, the pump will be here, so it's gonna help decrease the noise. It's a very quiet machine. You know, one thing I didn't mention is the beautiful mounts on that pump. Really nice rubber mounts, top and bottom, so it's really, really quiet. So underneath the machine here, you can see mine is plumbed in. This plumb hose comes with the machine. Here's that uh, valve control for going from reservoir or plumb. Some machines will use a solenoid valve for that, which could fail. These mechanical valves, they don't fail. Really like that a lot. Then over here, if you didn't want your LEDs turned on, you can do that. And then this is to let the machine know that you're gonna go reservoir or plumb. So those two switches here. So when you're reaching on the machine, you wanna turn those LEDs off. You can reach right under, just hit that switch. There's the uh, 
catch for the pre-drilled drip tray if you want to use that. But one of the things I really love here, something you don't find on a lot of machines, is this little access door. Now I've taken out the four little nuts that hold this on, but let's take a look behind here because this is great. So what we've got right here are drain valves for both boilers. So you turn these, if I can do it by hand, yep, and there's still a little pressure in there. So you can drain those boilers out. That's really, really handy. You know, maybe if you're going to be descaling the machine, you're able to drain the boilers, or if you're going to store the machine in a cold environment or just want to, you know, get the water out of there. If you're going to store it for a long time, you can drain both boilers right here. Then you also have access to the heating elements for both boilers. Uh, so service boiler here, brew boiler here. So if you're having a problem with that or you need to switch them out, you don't necessarily have to take the boilers out of the machine to do that. And that's really handy. So that's a look inside the machine. So my thoughts on the Vetrano design. With line pressure pre-infusion, you really can take your espresso further, especially when using fresh from roast specialty coffees. You'll have a lot of steaming power. It's gonna be more than what you'll get on many machines. I really like the quiet operation, one piece stainless steel frame, clean exterior lines, and the seamless base, which incorporates the large drip tray. And those LED backlights do add a little sparkle. Beyond that, it comes down to aesthetics to best match your style preference. That's the Quick Mill Vetrano design. It's available now exclusively at Whole Latte Love. If you have questions on this machine or anything coffee, use those comments and I'd be happy to get you an answer. I'm Mark, thanks for watching. If you like this stuff, do be sure and subscribe to the channel and I hope you'll come back soon for more of the best on everything coffee brought to you by Whole Latte Love.